Hello everyone, I'm Julia. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back. I took a little break from YouTube last week for Christmas. This week I'm going to be talking about my fitness journey. I don't really like calling it that. I think it's kind of like, I don't know, kind of annoying. It's what everyone says, but I don't know what else to call it. We're going to be getting a little bit personal today. We're gonna talk about some things that I don't particularly enjoy talking about, but I do think it's very important to mention because it is a part of my journey and it's stuff that I went through. Anyway, we're going to start from the very beginning. I've always been active. As a child, I started playing sports when I was four. I did gymnastics, I did dance, swim, soccer, and then eventually volleyball, which I stuck with, but was never really sedentary. I think that's the word. <laughs> and something else, if you do not already know, you're gonna wanna know that, I'm a very picky eater, I always have been. So this means I don't eat vegetables, I don't eat fruits, I don't eat seafood, there's a very long list. Most of the foods that I don't eat are healthy. So that was a struggle and I would say I had a very bad relationship with food from the beginning. So at the age of 10 is when I started to weight train. I know that sounds ridiculous, but the club, which I was playing volleyball for at the time, had a little strength training workout program that you could do if you wanted and my parents signed me up so that is where I very first started to work with weights I remember doing step ups holding the kettlebell and lunges and um, lateral work with resistance bands stuff like that I think I did that for maybe a year probably not even because it was not fun I hated it and it also wasn't really important to me at the time like I said I was 10 side note I put up a Q&A on my Instagram when I figured out I was gonna do this video so I will be answering some of those questions within the video and I'll save the rest for the end one question that I got that I thought was very good I could probably write an entire essay on it was how has the media and its standards affected my journey I would say it started it <laughs> I've been on social media since I was nine, and in middle school is when I really got into it. Tumblr was a big thing back then. I was very into Tumblr. Also, Victoria's Secret Pink was very trendy, so I loved that too. And I would say that is when I really started to compare my body to what I had seen on the internet, in stores, magazines. I literally, I wanted to look like a Victoria's Secret model, and I was 12. And, like, I was obsessed with the idea of that. Also, just the girls you see on Tumblr, I was constantly trying to look like that. I wanted to be perfect. And I was also always taking pictures of myself, whether it be on my phone, on Snapchat, on a camera. I was always staring at myself and trying to figure out what was wrong, what I could fix, what I wanted to change. I would say this is what led into some pretty bad habits. When I was in 8th grade, I think this is when this started. I wanted to be skinnier. If I have a picture of myself in 8th grade, I'll put it up here. I was not I was never overweight, I was never underweight, but I wasn't happy with my body. I wanted to be skinnier, I wanted to have abs so badly. In my mind, if there's a problem and I, I want to fix it, I would think, how can I achieve this? Eat healthier. But I couldn't really eat healthier because I don't eat fruits, I don't eat vegetables. My staple foods <laughs> were chicken fingers and fries, pizza, mac and cheese, butter noodles, hot dogs, like that's literally all I ate and cutting all of those out because all of those aren't particularly healthy basically left me with nothing to eat so that was my solution was just not eating not that's not a solution like not good at all but that is what I did along with that I was very strict about weighing myself every day writing it down I would do ab workouts from YouTube every day and like I said, I was very restricted with my eating, so that was that. Now, in ninth grade, I was kind of doing this starving myself thing on and off. And as far as working out, I wasn't lifting at this time, but I was still doing volleyball, so I was fairly active. And then in ninth grade, <laughs> so my first year of high school, I wanted my belly button pierced so badly, and the only thing that was holding me back was my dad, and we made a deal that if he let me get my belly button pierced, I would start weight training again so that is what I did because he wanted me to be able to jump higher shout out dad he cared very much about me and my volleyball career so that's how I got back into lifting I started working with the trainer and I started to do that consistently nothing really happened in 10th grade it's basically the same as my freshman year my junior year of high school in the spring I would say that was the worst that my eating disorder had been ever once again, I was never underweight. I honestly think that my body was eating the muscle, so it was very counterproductive because I was lifting. I would go to lift on an empty stomach and I'd come home and I wouldn't eat. So 
again, did that on and off all throughout my senior year. And then after prom, so in the spring, I decided that I was done doing that. It was just not healthy, it was not good, and I couldn't keep it up. And I also was going into my freshman year of college and I was about to be a division one athlete and I could not keep up those habits. That whole summer before college, I lifted consistently and I was eating normally, but not healthy at all. Then I moved in and we started preseason. So we had two practices a day and we ate every single meal together. We ate breakfast together in the locker room. We walked to get lunch after our first practice and we would eat dinner together too. So I was eating three meals a day, but they just were not healthy. We would go to Chipotle, we'd get pizza, we'd get fast food. I had a lot of sugary coffee. I had ice cream all the time. Was not eating good at all. And I gained weight after my freshman season of volleyball. That is when I realized I was extremely unhappy with where I was at athletically. Like I said, I was aware I'd put on some weight. I just felt that it was really holding me back and I could be a way better player, way better athlete if I took my nutrition and training a little bit more seriously. So that is what I did. I started in November because our season was over, so I had way more time. And I started by forcing myself to go to the gym and do cardio. In the morning before classes, I would run on the treadmill, I would bike, I would do the elliptical. And then I came home from school, I was home for winter break, and I started going to Planet Fitness with my dad. I was going to the gym every day. I was weight training three or four times a week and I was doing cardio like four or five times a week. All throughout December, I started to eat healthier too. I did not cheat at all. Like I didn't eat dessert for Thanksgiving, Christmas. And I know that's kind of sad, but genuinely I was so determined to get to the goal that I had set that I was like, I'm not gonna slip up. I just started this. Also, when I did that, I forced myself to try a smoothie. And this was the best thing I ever did for myself, honestly, because like I said, I didn't eat fruit. So finding a way for me to be able to do that was amazing. I finally was able to get fruit in my diet and it was through smoothies and smoothie bowls. For me, I'm a big texture person, so I wouldn't eat. I still to this day I wouldn't eat a strawberry like normally but I'll for sure have it in a smoothie same thing with pineapple but that whole month I did not lose a single pound and I was really frustrated because like I said I was working out every day and I was eating clean so then in January that is when I decided to start tracking my calories because I had done a lot of research on YouTube and I was like what am I doing wrong and I learned what a calorie deficit is I had never known what that was one of the questions that I got was how many calories did I eat when I was in a deficit and how did I know how many to eat I downloaded my fitness pal which is an app I typed in my height my current weight and my goal weight how active I was and from there it gave me I believe it was 1500 calories a day but on top of that I was adding the calories that I burned from my workout so I would say I was probably eating closer to 2,000, but I was also burning significantly more than that. That's how I knew. That's what I did. I stuck with that. When I went back to school in January, I continued to stick with that. And we got into our spring season, so we started practicing more and lifting consistently. And I was eating pretty much the same things every day. I would say after about two-ish months, that is when I really started to notice progress. I was able to finally see definition in my stomach, which I never had. So this came specifically from how I was eating, not from ab workouts. In total, I lost about 15 pounds. That was going into the spring too. I went from 160 to 145, which was my first goal weight. That was another question I got was, what was your first goal weight? And it was 145. Now, obviously, if you haven't been living under a rock, you know that this year we had a pandemic. I came home for spring break which was in March and never went back because we closed for the rest of the semester. So I had switched to at-home workouts because the gym was closed. This was brutal. It really was. I was in such a good routine. I was feeling so good. I was so happy with the changes that I'd made and the progress I was making and it was all just like kind of came to a halt. I decided I didn't want to stay in a calorie deficit anymore because I really didn't feel the need to get any leaner. So I went into maintenance for the majority of the late spring and I also did at-home workouts didn't make any significant gains I would just say I stayed the same it wasn't until the gym opened back up in June when I started lifting heavy regularly and I honestly don't think my body is too too much different let you guys decide but I also wasn't eating in an extreme calorie surplus I would say I was probably eating for maintenance 
in August of this year, I moved into school and we didn't have a season because of COVID, but we did practice still and we did lift still. And I didn't really have any specific goals as far as balking or cutting or anything like that just because I was more focused on volleyball but I did still weight train a little bit on my own. That brings us to where I'm at now. Since I've come home from school I was at the gym a little bit and then that closed again but lucky for me I have a great friend. Go check Joe out. He's literally the smartest dude when it comes to lifting. He knows his stuff and he's been generous enough to let me come to his garage gym and still continue to lift because now my goal is to bulk. But we're doing it in a smart way. So I'm in a calorie surplus. I have been for a little bit. I think I still need to eat more than what I am because I haven't gained any weight. I'm paying attention to my macros way more than I ever have. I'm eating a lot of carbs, majority carbs. I'm trying to keep my fat at around 20 grams a day and my protein at like 70, 80 grams a day. I really don't care about the protein as much at this point. High protein actually usually leads to a high fat diet. So my goal right now is to not put on a lot of fat, mainly just to put on muscle so hopefully I don't have to cut after. Because if I just put on lean muscle instead of all the extra fat that comes with bulking, then I don't need to cut in the spring because I won't have anything that I want to get rid of. That's the goal for right now. That is my journey. I hope that gives you a good idea of everything I've done to get up to this point. So now I'm gonna answer the questions that I didn't answer in the video, so the majority of them. <laughs> Besides engaging your core during other workouts, do you use weights when doing abs? I haven't really been doing abs recently. I was doing them once a week when the gym was open, but now that the gym isn't open, I haven't been doing abs at all. If I were to, yeah, I might use some weights, but genuinely, I don't really, I just really don't believe in like training abs super hardcore because that's not, that's really not what's going to give you definition in your diet is what's going to give you definition and also I know I have mentioned this before because you said it but when you're lifting, when you're doing really any lift properly, you're going to engage your core so that works it out all you need. How did you push through even when you didn't want to work out? At this point, I look forward to lifting. It is my favorite part of the day. I wouldn't say that's because I'm like super motivated, I just really enjoy it but... When I was first doing cardio and stuff, I really would just say my self-discipline is what got me through it and I kept my end goal in mind. I also wanted to prepare for our spring conditioning because I knew that we'd be doing way more cardio, more running, sprints, and I didn't want to be losing all the races. I didn't want to be dying. So that was something that also helped keep me motivated as far as like cardio because I knew that the more I did that, the better my endurance would be and then the better off I would be when I returned to school. How do you decide when you want to be in a deficit and a surplus? It really just depends what your main goal is. If you are more focused on losing weight, slimming down, getting rid of fat, you're gonna to want to be in deficit if you're more focused on gaining weight, gaining muscle, getting a little bigger, you're gonna wanna be in a surplus. How do you decide your workout plans? This is something that has just kinda come with time. For me, like I said, I've been weight training for a very long time and I know what I enjoy, I know what I like to do. I also am starting to learn what actually works for me. Right now, main goal, growing the glutes. So obviously I'm going to be hitting those more often than upper body. Um, I still do have two upper body days a week, but I have three leg days, two glute focused, and the third leg day is a quad day, and I'm still obviously using my glutes. I don't know if that really answered your question, but that's how I decide my workout plans, basically what my biggest goal is, and then I create the plan around that. Do you do comparisons at the beginning of each month for progress slash how do you keep track? So when I was losing weight, I literally took pictures of myself every day just because I was so in shock that I could see stomach definition. I was just like always taking pictures. I kind of wanted to have the proof that I was actually making the changes that I would set out to. Now, I do take pictures and videos every once in a while just so I can look back on them, but I don't have like a beginning of the month check-in or anything like that. Do you take any supplement? Pre-workout, collagen, etc. No, I do not. I don't take pre-workout. I've never taken pre-workout. I don't want to. I just don't want to need a substance to lift. Never taken collagen and I'm also weaning off the protein powder. How often do you work out a week? I've been trying to weight train five to six times a week, but it also just depends on how I'm feeling. Like last week I had three rest days. What's your relationship with alcohol like? I hope I can talk about this because I'm only 19. I don't, I don't really drink. At this point I really don't have the interest to. I don't like 
being hungover in the morning, feeling like crap all day. I'd way rather get a good night's sleep, know that I didn't put a bunch of toxins in my body, and then be able to go work out in the morning or do something productive. And obviously, that's not for everyone. That is your choice. That is completely up to you. Personally, I just don't have the desire to really drink and get hammered. <laughs> How many calories do you eat per day? Currently, I'm eating 2,200 but like I said, I think I need to up that a little bit more because I'm pretty tall. I'm 5'8", and it's going to take a lot more to fuel me and then to have enough excess fuel that it goes towards building my muscles. So that probably will be changing soon. What is your weekly plan for workouts? Go watch my last video because I have every single workout that I've been doing five out of seven days of the week. How do you keep up with lifting on top of volleyball and team lifts? This was a learning curve for me. This semester, I really had to work on finding a balance. We were lifting as a team twice a week. I wanted to lift more than that, so after practices, some days I would go to the rec right after and I would lift. It really wasn't hard to do, especially because all of my classes are online. So I really didn't have to worry about that part and worry about getting to class. So that's how I did it. Did you ever do something for your hip dips? I need help with that. I'm gonna put in a picture right here. I still have hip dips. <laughs> I've been lifting for a very long time and I still have hip dips and it's not like I don't regularly train my glutes. It really is based on your bone structure. You can build some muscle, you know, in your glute. You can build some muscle around your hips, kinda, but you're probably still gonna have significant hip dips. Like, it just really is the way it is and don't stress it really don't and most people never thought twice about their hip dips until the fitness industry found a way to target it and make people insecure about them but there is no special workout that's going to make them go away those are all the questions that is the video for this week i hope it was helpful in some way let me know if you have any questions feel free to drop a comment message me comment on instagram i don't care i'll get back to you thank you so much for watching i love you all and i'll see you next week